to try to step back a little bit and take a sort of wider perspective, which I hope will complement some of the really interesting observations we've heard already. I thought a lot about this title, uh, and particularly about what it would mean to think about alternative arts and economies in the university. Um, and the other language describing the topics of the, of the conference that is very provocative. For the last decade or so, I've been counseling groups like this or faculty to try to avoid the rhetoric of crisis because it's not a particularly winning uh, rhetoric and people don't want like to you know, invest money in a, in a sinking uh, ship. And indeed, if you look at the evidence that one sees at a conference like this, the arts are thriving. Um, we're very proud at UC Santa Barbara to host UC IRA, so I'm aware not only of the exciting things going on in the arts on our campus, but also some of what's happening across, uh, uh, across the whole UC system. Um, and there's a lot to boast about. There's a lot to feel very um, excited about. Yet at the same time, I think we are in a kind of state of siege, um, not just because of the budget crisis that we were thrown into you know, a year ago, uh, but just in general, and people have alluded to this nationally and indeed internationally um, uh, at the moment. And I think that it's a really important moment to try also uh, to insist that the university itself, particularly a public university, represent an alternative. That the university itself represents an alternative economy uh, in a way, and an alternative to um, certain things that are happening outside of the university. And I agree completely with some of the language uh, that was in the, the descriptions of the topic of the, of the conference, that really the central question for us now is the question of the liberal arts. Now, I believe that it's important to make every kind of argument you can make, and I pick up on some of the comments that, uh, that David was making. Um, and uh, I don't think we should uh, fear um, sort of speaking in the language that the other, the other economy uh, is, uh, um, is structured in. And in fact, one can make a very strong argument that what California needs in the 21st century, uh, what's needed in the global uh, economy, are exactly the things that the liberal arts um, teach. And indeed, the arts within the liberal arts. Creativity, innovation, collaboration, communication, critical thinking. And if you talk to business leaders, if you go to China and talk to government leaders there about the failings of their educational system, they'll tell you that the greatest threat to you know, being able to compete in the global economy is lacking those things, creativity, innovation, collaboration, communication, and, and critical thinking. At the same time that the liberal arts really are more important than ever to the state, to the country, um, there's a threat to the liberal arts within uh, because of a market-driven mentality that our students are coming in with, um, that our students are now being, you know, pressured about by um, their parents, worse than ever before. You know, what good is that degree? What good is that uh, major? Um, when I address our freshmen in convocation, I tell them uh, that um, we are preparing them for the jobs that don't exist yet, uh, and that um, they need to take a broader view of how college is going to um, prepare them, that if it's a vocational school, it's a, school, a vocational school in the sense of helping students find their vocation, find their um, voice. The budget cuts are also a real threat to the whole concept of, of um, general um, education. Um, one of the most painful things that we've had to do is to cut courses for non-majors uh, in our arts departments because we had to prioritize in a kind of triage uh, the courses that students needed to complete degree um, requirements. Um, so it's a dangerous time when the arts and the general liberal arts approach um, may be undermined by forces both outside of the university and inside of the university. Um, as tuition goes up, students, you, you hear more and more talk about three-year BAs which basically all, you know, undermines the concept of general um, education um, itself. Um, and as we see the arts being decimated in K through 12, uh, and more and more emphasis being put on, uh, on testing, uh, then the categories for the type of learning uh, 
uh, that takes place through, through, through the arts get um, undermined as well. Um, one of the arguments that I think that we need to make to ourselves and to others also has to do with um, aesthetic experience. And I speak here, you know, as an 18th century scholar, um, and the language might seem somehow, you know, retrograde or, or anachronistic, um, but um, I want to, you know, venture to make a, you know, 60 second argument about this. I don't mean aesthetic experience in the, you know, uh, isolated, rarefied museum experience uh, sense. And that's not even what they meant in the 18th century when they talked about um, aesthetic experience. What I think is at stake here really is an alternative mode of attention. We live in an age of uh, consumer culture, uh, multitasking, uh, kind of state-sponsored attention deficit uh, disorder, uh, uh, a dazzling kind of meteor shower of media. Uh, the problem, despite what you know, the doctors are, are telling us, is not attention deficit disorder really, but attention surplus uh, disorder. Um, it's not surprising that, that this, this attention deficit disorder would be so symptomatic in, in some way. And what we really need, I think, is a kind of self-conscious framing of experience, uh, an emphasis on the acts of self-forgetting and self-discovery, uh, encounters with self uh, and other, that really art teaches us about. Um, really what we have within the university is a kind of alternative economy of attention. But there was a reference in the uh, description to a haven for the liberal arts. And here I think it's really important to recognize our responsibility to take the arts and to find the arts outside of the university through our outreach programs, through our community-based uh, programs, through our public art programs, through our efforts to actually get students to discover art in the world outside the university, um, uh, in the world that they live in. And part of learning, I think, about aesthetic experience means that it doesn't just take place when you're picking up something called a work of art. It has something to do with how we experience the world as well. So the stakes, I think, are very high, and it's important for us to protect <coughs> the sphere of the liberal arts education within the university. But in doing that, I think we have to understand what it is that we give to our students and give to the public uh, to take with them uh, outside the 